Well, everything he's gotten has been in the in the lane, with the exception of maybe one eight to twelve foot jump shot. Boy, the wonderful parody in college basketball. You look at every conference and so many teams that are right there close to the lead or in the lead. Villanova, a game under 500 in the Big East, but you can see how well they play here at home. And Cozy Pavilion down to six on the shot clock. Right, is he still perfect? No, his first miss, and Buchanan goes inside, and it's in by Sales. Back to an eight-point lead, Sales in double figures. Look at that beehive down at the student section as UCLA is playing at that end. Billy Knight puts a muffler on the crowd for a moment with a three, and it's 47-42. Ten for Knight. Every time this place has been really ready to explode, UCLA has been able to come up with a timely three. Now they've got to do a job on their defensive board as Villanova has been able to pluck away second shots on a couple of occasions this half. Buchanan with Knight on him. It's Snowden for three. And out of bounds, last touch by Capono. So Villanova will have it after this timeout. 7.49 left in the second half. Villanova celebrates a five-point advantage. CBA Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by JCPenney Stores, Catalog, and JCPenney.com. It's all inside. Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. And by Volvo, Volvo for life. We're about 12 miles to the west of the Liberty Bell Independence Hall in historic downtown Philadelphia on the campus of Villanova. This is the Pavilion, 6,500 strong, sold out uh, every game that it has existed except one when they had a huge snowstorm here. And uh, a highly cherished ticket by these fans of the Wildcats, and they've been treated to a terrific game with Villanova leading by five and 7.49 to go. Something to keep an eye on. UCLA only has 14 fouls. Villanova already over the limit. So UCLA can continue to be aggressive with their defense and not be in the bonus for a while. T.J. Cummings hawking sales, and here's Snowden with Bozeman on him. Reggie Bryant with Capono. Jay Wright really milking the clock here in the second half. And again, you've got to make sure you get good shots at the end of that kind of milking of the clock. If not, then I think that plays into UCLA's hands. Buchanan had to force that one and the rebound to Capono. And here come the Bruins, trailing by five. UCLA with only four field goals in 13 minutes and five turnovers of the second half. Well, the defense for Villanova has been Saran wrap like very aggressive as Billy Knight goes to work inside. He's got two plus one. Here's the foul. Here's the foul nice little curl cut and then Knight going strong to the rim right into the chest of Brooke Sales. And that's a big foul Clark. That's the fourth on Sales. The MVP of this Villanova team. So he'll go out. Jay Wright will rest him for a couple of minutes. Knight at the line to try to cut the lead to two. At the seven minute mark as Barnes comes flying off the line. Well that's Ricky Wright shoving him into Reggie Bryant. And this may be a, a continuation of the elbow taken earlier by Hines they've called a loose elbow on Villanova and so a technical foul was called against the Wildcats. This is Knight trying to complete the three point play. And then Matt Barnes will get free throws as a result of, result of the foul. Here, right there it is right there in the right part of your screen. Just an overzealous 
lower body root canal by Ricky Wright to shove Matt Barnes out of there. And so Barnes makes it a four point play and gets another shot on the technical which would tie it. Barnes now with 14 as he misses the second and it remains a one point Villanova lead and UCLA will retain possession Dave Libby going to get both captains Capono and Derek Snow over to talk talk it through well every coach uh, football basketball manager and baseball the argument is can't do anything about the call that's been made but you're arguing for the call ahead and you saw Lavin come streaking out when Hines went down with the elbow and no foul was called. 746 Villanova. Barnes inside stripped and a foul. That's a good smart basketball by play by Matt Barnes. He had the perimeter shot. He knows Villanova's over the limit. He knows the last couple of possessions for the last minute they've been down here because of the foul situation. So he takes it right at the Wildcats defense and draws a foul. Three now on point guard Derek Snowden Barnes uh, only a 61 percent free throw shooter now two for three and the game is even at 47 market at the 647 time out here in the second half Barnes looking for his 17th point rattles at home and UCLA claims the lead for the first time in the second half. They were down by as much as eight. Full court press and that forces a timeout by Reggie Bryant. So the Bruins certainly have picked up the tempo and I think where it all began was with the elbow on Hines when no foul was called. It seemed that that's where the intensity began. Well it's time now for today's Nextel Tournament Heritage. 31 years ago when go-go boots were all the rage and the NCAA championship game featured UCLA and Villanova. Eventual tournament MVP Howard Porter kept Nova close the entire game, but the Bruins one-two punch of Henry Bibby and Steve Patterson proved to be too much. They combined for 46, and when Sidney Wicks grabbed the final rebound, UCLA had won its fifth consecutive NCAA championship, 68-62. John Wooden congratulated by Nova coach Jack Kraft. And there's Jack today with Phil Ford, a longtime coach. He's still coaching, is he not, Clark? Phil Ford right next to the right, or excuse me, Chris Ford, right next to Jack Kraft. I think Chris is coaching at Brandeis University, coaching the women's team. Longtime NBA coach. And they still talk in the game. Uh, the headmaster with uh, one of his uh, stars on that Villanova 71 team. UCLA with a 15-6 run to take a one-point lead. And a little too aggressive is Matt Barnes on the defensive end. His second foul. Boy, it's so tempting to really try to harass that player when he stopped his dribble on the sideline. Matt Barnes with his size advantage on Brian. All he needed to do was just get the hands going and he could still keep a cushion. Got a little overzealous and picked up the foul. That's only the 15th foul on UCLA. And instead of playing man to man now, Dick, they go into the zone defense. They've got the lead. They're going to try to make Villanova make a play. And this is where they miss Brooks Sales because he's a good passer. He's another ball handler for Villanova. And with him with the four fouls, they really miss his presence on the floor as a ball handling helper. Wright takes it inside and meets resistance. So Bryant takes the. Richie Bryant and Villanova back in front by two. And at the other end, the freshman Bozeman ties it up at 50. He has four points. We're under six minutes here at the pavilion at Villanova. Again, Villanova very content to go deep into the shot clock. They've got three guards, Snowden, Buchanan, and Bryant with Wright, the high leaping forward, and the freshman Charles on the floor. Bryant says, I'll try it again. He's short this time, and it's deflected out to Capono. 
The junior was looking for the opening, and there it is for three. Rattles out. And Buchanan uh, beats Knight to the ball. Well, that's a good shot for Capono and Jay Wright. And the call of 30. 30 second timeout called by Jay Wright. Hmm. It's an impressive resume. So tell me about yourself. So tell me about yourself. Excuse me? Excuse me? What are you doing? What are you doing? You realize if you continue in this manner, you'll be held in contempt pursuant to Rule 37B1. You realize if you continue in this manner, you'll be held in contempt pursuant to Rule 37B1. Please read back the last question and answer. Question. Given the nature of your experience... Hotjobs.com Reminder, tomorrow on CBS, an important Big Ten game. The Buckeyes, tied with Indiana for the Big Ten lead, will play Tom Izzo's Michigan State Spartans. Uh, look at the Big Ten standings, and this just uh, symbolizes what's happening around the country. Two teams tied for the lead, and Minnesota surprise, Wisconsin a surprise, Illinois a negative surprise. Everyone thought they'd be up there in that top spot. Jam tight in the Big Ten with Ohio State in the middle of a stretch of four road games. They've got uh, Michigan State tomorrow. Tied at 50 with five minutes to go and Wright takes the drive and Knight rebounds for UCLA. UCLA's biggest lead in the entire game is two points. The high lob to Barnes had to fight his own man. The jump hook not there. He gets it back as Barnes goes up and scores. Oh, did he work hard for that? He too. sure did. Persistence pays there. He just wanted it a little more than anybody else. What a game he's having on his mom Ann's birthday. He's got to be pleased with his effort. Leads all scorers now with 19. Buchanan yet to score this half. And there's the steal by Billy Knight as they try to get it to Buchanan. And UCLA has its biggest lead four with just under four minutes to go. Dick, we talked about the margin of error being so thin and slight for Villanova. Turnovers hadn't been a problem until then. Knight, perfect anticipation, the pilfer and the punch. It a gentle throwdown for Billy Knight. Billy Knight with 13 points. His average is 15 on the season. But this was a great hustle play by Barnes. And the athleticism up and down and strong. See, all, offensive rebounding to me, Dick, is about positioning and the ability to make a quick second jump. And you saw that with Barnes there. He was on the floor after that miss before anybody else had reacted because first he shot it and had a sense of where it was coming off and then he pursued it quickly. Well, Barnes at 6'7 uh, and 235, he was a superb high school football star, a tight end that caught 45 touchdown passes in his last two years in high school, highly recruited in that sport. Knight with a little flop, no whistle, and here's Sales back in the game, and this is key for Villanova to get this man back in play. All right, that was Andrew Sullivan. I thought that was Buchanan over there. That would have been a shot for Gary Buchanan. 54-50, the visitors from UCLA is Snowden looking for Buchanan. It goes to right. Down to seven on the shot clock, and another steal for a moment. Wright has to hurry. Open is Buchanan. And just beat the 35-second clock. How big was that? Huge. His first basket of the second half, Gary Buchanan, after 14 in the first half, and time is called. A UCLA player down at the far end of the court. Looks like Bozeman, Cedric Bozeman. It is Bozeman. We'll check his condition when we return to Villanova, Pennsylvania. UCLA with a one-point lead, 54-53, three minutes, 16 seconds remaining. 
as the Bruins have kind of turned up the heat here the last five six minutes they have they've done a nice job defensively and then they capitalized on some foul shots in the last couple of minutes to get back even and the defense has been good and Matt Barnes has made timely shots but they just may have lost Cedric Bozeman for the game we'll take a look there's Bozeman right here just keep an eye on him as he tries to go over the screen by right and I think it's knee on knee right there right the right knee, knee. knee exactly the right knee of right and the right knee of Bozeman and then as he tries to get to the loose ball, he recognizes that something's not quite right. And Bozeman, at the start of the season, December 3rd, had arthroscopic surgery on that right knee. He missed seven games. And uh, one hopes that that hasn't uh, done damage to an already uh, injured joint. Especially as he was just starting to round into form. So that means Capono... Hines and Matt Barnes become the primary ball handlers for UCLA. Under three minutes to go, and Gadzurek doesn't handle the pass. And on the turnover, Villanova with a chance for the lead. 2.50 to go. It's with a Jay Wright offense. He likes to bring the 6'10 sails outside. He's such an excellent passer. Buchanan. Trying to create his own over Gadzurik. Just missed. And out of bounds off sales. He, he was misses. right there with Ricky Wright, and they fought over it and knocked it out. They had the board covered. Just weren't able to squeeze the orange. Tough shot by Buchanan. You want to execute your offense and try to get Buchanan a good shot. Knight loses the handle. And another UCLA turnover in the defense of Villanova. If they win this game, that's where Jay Ride will be able to salute his players. Without question. Matter of fact, both of these teams have given really good effort at the defensive end. Not a lot of easy shots either way. Sales, that's a backcourt violation. So a turnover by Villanova just under two minutes to go. Villanova has not had a lot of turnovers today, Dick, but when they've happened, have been a crucial times. Only nine turnovers, averaging 19 a game, the Wildcats. But in a game where the possessions are fewer, the turnovers become more magnified. UCLA embracing a tenuous one-point lead. And a foul away from the ball on a hold. Now let's take a look at the CBS Sportsline stat of the game, and it is turnovers with uh, UCLA plus five over Villanova. The Wildcats controlling the ball better and staying in the game. Get complete game stats at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline as Cedric Bozeman returns to the Bruin bench. Whether or not he could return to action, we'll soon learn. Capono, the best free throw shooter for UCLA, and that is his 21st in a row. We've got two great free throw shooters. Buchanan set an NCAA record last year. The Villanova star with a 73 straight. And Capone now, oh, it ends at 21. And Knight goes in, though, and gets it for a three-point play. The last couple of minutes, the attitude club plays have been made by UCLA. Deflection, steals, offensive rebounds. We understand uh, that Notre Dame is having quite a go with uh, Georgetown today. How many overtimes? Someone said four overtimes. Can that be right? Let's go to New York and Tim Brando. Right you are, Dickenberg. They are in their fourth overtime. Here's how they got there. At the end of the third, Gerald Riley will have a shot blocked by Ryan Humphrey. Now watch the shot clock. It's already round down to zero, so Kevin Braswell's three-pointer does not count. Therefore, they're in their fourth overtime. Most points scored in a Big East game ever, 117 by Providence against Pitt, all the way back to 1990. So they're going to be setting some records before this one's over, Dick. All right, thank you, Tim. A four-point lead now for the Irish with 113 to go at four wow. OTs. Wow. That's a team to keep an eye on, Dick. That Notre Dame team. You like I, I really like them. I love the point guard, Chris Thomas. Ryan Humphrey gives them a presence inside, and they've got excellent shooters. Not very deep, but an experienced, tough team with an excellent point guard. A reminder, with only five team fouls on UCLA, they can use a foul with 130 to go. And Villanova trailing by four. Reggie Bryant fires and sails with that offensive rebound. Turns down the shot himself, and they turn it around to Buchanan. He's the man. 57-56, Buchanan with 20. 
An offensive rebound by Sales made that happen. Crowd on its feet, final minute. Boy, Lavin might think about a timeout here to try to get Capono back in the game. He's at the scores table trying to check in, but we're into eight seconds on the shot clock now. Barnes with six, and they knock it away out of bounds to UCLA. Vance didn't like that with three seconds on the shot clock. What a rainbow shot. Initially by Bryant there, Sales coming up with the weak side board. Swing it. And there it is, Gary Buchanan. And Sales got the rebound and made the pass before the assist as Jason Capono on the dead ball able to get back in the game. Got to be a quick shot. And it's stripped by Wright. And Wright with a primal scream as he makes the play. And timeout Villanova. Oh, do they love it. Here in Villanova. Visitors from UCLA leading by one with 35 seconds to go. The arrow points to Nova, and more importantly, Villanova has the ball. A four-second difference between game and shot clock. So UCLA can defend, and if they rebound, you'd expect Villanova to foul right away. But even if Villanova scores, UCLA with a quick timeout. UCLA a has a foul to give, too, Clark. Exactly. Good point. The only thing is the shot clock restarts on the foul. Resets, rather. Sales takes it in against Zurich, and it won't fall to the dismay of these partisan Wildcat fans, but Zurich with a foul will send Brooks Sales to the line. Excellent decision here by Sales. Strong take. Good jump stop and a try at the goal. Just overshot it, but he'll get himself to the line. Well, I'd like to see Sales do that a lot more. He's just so content to set other people up, and he's got offensive skills that he should be a little more aggressive in using. He ties it at 57. He's a 71% shooter from the line. The foul was the sixth against UCLA. Capono back in. And Sales looks for his 12th point of the game. He's averaging just under 10. UCLA with 21 seconds to go. Knight for three, tipped out and controlled by Knight. He forces the shot, didn't need to. There was more time than that. Right rebounds. Villanova has defeated UCLA. The great outside shooting of Gary Buchanan with 20, most of those from three-point range. And the rebounding and defense of Wright and Sales in this determined Villanova team comes from behind in the final minute to win it 58-57. A tough shot there by Billy Knight, but he came up with the rebound. There's over seven seconds to go. They've got a timeout. No reason to force it. If you don't call the timeout, at least reset your offense. But again, the clock in his head was going faster than the clock on the scoreboard. And as a result, Villanova able to prevail. Jay Wright, ice water, <laughs> this first year coach at Villanova. And we're going to repeat what we said earlier. Jay Wright is on the way to building a terrific program here at Villanova. Steve Lavin hustling, working, gesticulating, trying to help at home, hoping for a foul, none there. And it's a long trip home to Los Angeles for UCLA. Well, this is the retrieval of the loose ball after the first missed shot. And then Billy Knight trying to draw a foul, but there was too much time left on the clock for that kind of shot attempt. 
UCLA led by Matt Barnes today with 19. Billy Knight, who tried to win second game in a row with a buzzer beater, had 15. Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game. By Matt Barnes of UCLA with 19 and six boards. And Gary Buchanan, who got Villanova off to a great start with his three-point shooting. Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. So for Clark Kellogg, this is Dick Henberg, so long from Villanova's Pavilion. Oh, what a celebration on this Saturday here west of Philadelphia. The Wildcats 58, the Bruins 57. Coming up next on CBS Sports Live, third round coverage of the Buick Invitational from Torrey Pines, California. The final score again, what a game, 58-57, Villanova.